to the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 10, and we're going to begin our reading at verse number 38. The gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 10, and we're going to begin our reading at verse number 38. We're asking the question, do you really care? Do you really care? And today our subtitle title is Listening Skills. Everybody say listening skills. That may seem a little odd, but you know what? If you know, we, We're going to discover that people who really care learn how to listen. I will also tell you that an uh, overwhelming majority of, of Christians sometimes don't know what it means to really listen. And so if we don't understand that listening is a part of caring and we don't learn how to listen in a true biblical sense, then we're going to end up showing people that they don't, we don't really care. We don't really care. Are they going to get that, make that assumption based on our lack of ability to listen attentively? Okay? So the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 10, and we're going to begin our reading at verse number 38. The text says, uh, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet. Everybody say, listening. Listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. We ask him the question, do you really care? And we, we're going to hone in on our subtopic of listening skill, listening, listening, listening. Now, what we're going to discover here, and we'll look at this and in, in, in kind of see if we can pull back the layers a little bit, but Mary and Martha's experience in this particular passage, we're going to discover it teaches us that waiting and sitting at Jesus' feet is much more important than running to and fro trying to work one's way into God's favor. Are y'all listening to me today? There's one basic essential in life, and that is sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing his word. Now, again, we're going to see here uh, that, that Mary understood the value of listening, especially to the master. But what we're going to see is, is that, that, that listening is important in our care ministry, in our ability to show people that we really care about what's going on in their life. Now, now, this scene here that we come to our text with pictures two strong characters here. First, we have Martha, who's the first person, then who, who had highly commendable character. Uh, and, and we're going to see her sister Mary also here. One, a couple of things I want to just, just take a mental note of about Martha here. Martha was a giving person. Everybody say giving person. And, and, and when you read this text, in order for her to entertain Jesus and his apostles, she had to have a big place to, to have that dinner for them. Wouldn't you all agree? Uh, she, it's, it, you know, she, had, she had she owned a house so large that she could give lodging, a place to stay to Jesus and his apostles. And so, so, so taking care of so many uh, was, was expensive, wouldn't you all agree? If, if you had, let's just say, if you invited Jesus plus his 12 apostles to your house and to stay, spend the night, and to eat food. How many of you know that gets expensive to feed more than who you normally feed on a regular basis? Would, that, would y'all agree? How many of y'all have entertained family from out of town and your food bill went up when you entertain folks from out of town? Y'all heard me say this before, right? How many of you know that your water bill goes up when you entertain people from out of town? Now, people from out of town don't even think about your water bill. They just come and take a shower. Uh, stay there for the week, drink your water, 
do everything else, maybe even wash their car with it, but then they leave town and never thought that your water bill just went up exponentially because you had 13 more people there in the house. So Martha had a large house, and it was very expensive, but yet still she brought them in to take care of them. So she was a giving person. And one of the things that I, I realized about born-again believers, if we're going to show that we really care, we have to learn to become giving people. Quit being stingy. Hello? Do we have any tight people in the house? Y'all know what it means to be tight? That means that you're not very easy, you, you, you don't depart with your money very easily. You're not a giving person. But I heard a, a guy explain this way, and y'all probably heard it too, he says, when you have a closed fist or closed hand, you, 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 can't, you, you, you may not be giving anything out, but you sure ain't getting nothing in, right? So we got to learn to be giving. So Martha was a giving person, and Martha was also a courageous person. Why do I say she was courageous? Well, it's, it, it was now dangerous at this point in time in this text to, to, to associate too closely with Jesus, especially around Jerusalem. Because the authorities were already seeking out ways to try to kill him and put him to death. And many of his own disciples at this point in time had forsaken him. And others were now speaking against him. So in order for Martha to invite them into her home, you know people saw uh, her hosting them because you know how nosy neighbors are, right? If nosy neighbors, and sometimes it's good to have nosy neighbors because if something is out of the ordinary, that nosy neighbor will get on the phone and call somebody. But you know how it is when you see somebody two or three cars at somebody else's house, the first thing that you say, you may not say it out loud, you may not even call people on the phone, but you start wondering, I wonder who all that is over there. Am I right about it? Because it's out of the ordinary, right? And so, so, so for her to entertain Jesus and his apostles took courage because the religious hierarchy was at this point in time looking for a way to put him to death. So there are others of his disciples that turned away from him, but here we see Martha showing courage by entertaining them. And Martha was also a caring and loving person. She loved and cared for her sister Mary and her brother Lazarus. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, when you look at it a little bit deeper, you find out that they were uh, her sister Mary and Lazarus were staying in her house. So she was so 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 staying in her house meant that she had, uh, in, in a way, was taking care of them at least partially. Amen. But so so she was a caring and loving person, and Mary had some good attributes also. Also, she was a loving and humble person, and she she had a spiritual hunger for the Word of God. So we see this scenario where Jesus comes in and it's impossible were being hosted, and we get into this, this particular situation because I want us to understand how important it is for us to grasp the, the, the skill of listening not only to Jesus but to our fellow man who's in, who, who, who's in need of a listening ear. All of us at some point in time need somebody who can listen to what we got to say. And prayerfully, as we begin to expand on care ministry, we can begin to learn to be good listeners. Amen? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but, and, and I, I told you this before, part of our teaching on care ministry is to try to get each one of us to, to value relationship more than just, just transaction with people. I told you that if you're going to really care, that means you got to move from just being transactional, dealing with the problem, to being relational, dealing with the person. Because caring is more than just fixing a problem. Caring is involving yourself relationally with the person. And many of us sitting here today under the sound of my weak voice, as we say, are not very good at becoming relational. We're good at fixing a problem or seeing something, helping somebody, give them some money, but many of us struggle sometimes to be relational with people. And God is saying that if we're going to be the church that has maximum kingdom impact, we're going to have to learn how to be relational. Everybody say relational. So, so, so we need to realize that. So I want you to just jot this core principle down. Here's our core principle for, for this Sunday's message. Caring is relational. Everybody say caring is relational, okay? It's relational. Now, 
uh, one thing I want you to realize uh, that, 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 that listening, listening is foundational to caring. Listening is foundational to caring, and it takes a concerted effort to be a good listener. How many of y'all have struggled sometimes to really listen to your spouse like they want you to listen to them? All right, let me, let me, let me let's back up. How many of y'all have felt like your spouse didn't listen to what you had to say? I mean, really listen, really soaked in, really grasped what you were trying to share with them and convey to them. How many of you ever had somebody, your spouse or your children or your, your mom, your dad, when you were talking to them, they were doing other stuff, they were preoccupied? Now, when someone is, when you're talking to someone and they're preoccupied doing something else, does that make you think they don't, that what you're saying is not really important to them? Yes, it does. So we got to realize that, that if we're going to be uh, God's people, if we're going to uh, excel in care ministry, we have to realize that listening is foundational to caring, and it takes a concerted effort to be a good listener. And we're going we're gonna to see that as we go along through that. But we see in our text again, uh, Martha was working, the worker be making sure everybody was taken care of, doing the transactional stuff that needed to be done. I'm not saying it was stuff that was not necessary, but, but Mary, Jesus said, did the greater thing in this instance. She sat down to listen to what the master had to say. And so, so we, we, we see a stark contrast between the behaviors of Mary and Martha. And, and, and so in, in, in addition to showing an active interest by availing herself and putting relationship first, Mary's posture demonstrated that she was attentive and eager to hear what Jesus had to say. She sat at his feet. She, she sat in a position of posture that says, I'm ready to soak in everything you got to say, Master. And so whenever we're talking to people, there's some things that we're going to see here a little bit later on that we got we to gotta do in order to communicate the message that we want to listen attentively. But go back to the words of the text right quick. The Bible says this, um, her sister Mary, verse number 39, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Amen. But Martha was what? Distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. How many of you will attest to the fact that there are times in your life as a believer, in your time in coming to church, that, that you may not be listening to me as, as attentively as you should because you were distracted by something. Maybe you were distracted by a crying baby. Maybe you were distracted by sitting next to a talker. You ever been in church and sat next to a talker? Come on now. While I'm preaching, they airborne you telling you stuff. I need to know, is anybody, anybody? There are even times when, when, when I've been to services and, and, and I've preached, and while I'm preaching, you got talkers in the audience talking more than I'm talking. Now, it sounds like it's good. Amen, Pastor. You go on, say it, Reb. Tell them, Reb. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I appreciate your support, but I want to make sure that you're listening to me while you talk doing all that talking. <laughs> and y'all have been to one of those services? Now, again, you know, in the African-American church tradition, we have what we call a call and response method of communicating or preaching. Y'all know what call and response is, right? Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> now that's that's how our, that's how our, that's how our, uh, historical. And I, I don't, I don't, again, I'm not criticizing, but what I'm telling you is sometimes when people are saying amen, sometimes when people are saying hallelujah, sometimes people get up shouting to my go ahead, Ray up. They ain't listening. <laughs> and what I would tell you is is that if we're going to progress, if we're going to grow in our faith. We have to learn to become good listeners. See, see, see Jesus here, when he responds to Martha in her, in her, in her uh, complaint, come on, can we be honest? She was complaining about her sister, yeah. right? Have any of y'all ever complained about your sister yeah. or your brother yeah. or your mama yeah. or your daddy yeah. or your children? 
Yeah, yeah, you have. All of them belong to you. Y'all are relational, but you complain about them. Look at, look at verse 40. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Now, most of y'all who are sitting in this audience, I, 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 would, I would probably venture to guess that some of y'all were right there with Martha. Come on, can, can, can we be honest? Some of y'all who do all the work around the house when all the family's there, you, 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 you're right there with Martha. You can feel Martha's pain. And you would have been amen in Martha. Come on. When Martha said, Jesus, doesn't it seem in fact, yeah, amen. I know some of y'all would have been, hallelujah. He says, watch, watch this now. Don't, don't miss it. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem fair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But now watch what the master says. The Lord said, uh, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. Uh, details have to be taken care of. But, but we have to realize there's a time to work and there's a time to listen. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. When Jesus responded, he distinguished between being and doing, indicating Mary had chosen what was most important, being and doing. See, in ministry, guys, we have to be careful that we don't get caught up in just doing ministry. We have to be careful that we don't just caught up in just doing the work of the Lord without spending any time with the Lord and allow him to deal with us. We are doing rather than being or becoming. Can I get a witness? And so, so the story of Martha and Mary reminds us that being overly concerned and stressed about tasks, appearances, schedules, all that stuff can distract us and divert our attention away from what matters the most, which is enjoying relationship with God and people. See, you know, you, you can, some, some of y'all help me here. How many of y'all ever been on vacation before and you came back more tired after the vacation than you did before you went on vacation? And, and part of, quote, your reasoning for going on vacation was so that the family could spend some time together. But you got that one person in the group who got every day scheduled out from 7 a.m. to 12 o'clock midnight. And, and, and you're going and you're doing all these things, but when, the, when, when, when it's all said and done, and it's good that you did those things with your family, but, but that time just, just to relax, have some, some built-in time in the day where you can have some conversation and not talking about, I'm getting on this ride. Come on. Or I'm going to this beach. We, got, we, we, we have to learn how to be relational. Everybody say relational. So all this stuff, even ministry, can distract us from enjoying relationship with God and people. So, you know, Scripture does not necessarily elaborate on the conversation that transpired between Jesus and Mary, but, but what we do discover that listening is a character trait that Jesus repeatedly referred to in different contexts, okay? Watch this. Go with me right quick to Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse number 14. Matthew 10 and 14. Glory to God. Everybody say, listening, listening. Jesus, amen, would not remove Mary from her listening posture in order to avail her sister Martha's complaint. The text says in Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse number 14. Are you there with me? Let's read together. It says what? If any household or town refuses to welcome you or what? Listen to your message. What does it say? Shake its dust from your feet as you leave. Verse 15 for good measure. I tell you the truth, the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day, a town that won't listen. See, there, there's, we have entire nations that won't listen. We have entire families that won't listen, 
amen, to what God has to say. They won't listen to wise counsel and wise advice. Listen, guys, listening is, is, is a skill set that all of us have to learn to develop. Go to Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse number 10. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse number 10. Glory to God. Talking about listening skills. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verse number 10. The text reads here, uh, it says, Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and what? Hear. Watch this. Listen, he said, and try to understand. Listen, he said, and try to understand. Let's go to Luke, the 8th chapter. Again, all of Luke chapter 8, verse number 8. I'm just looking, I, I want to see that Jesus repeatedly referred to listening in different contexts in Scripture. Luke 8 and 8 says what? Still other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he had said this, he called out, anyone with ears to hear should what? Listen and understand. Got one more for you. Go to uh, Luke the ninth chapter, verse number 44. Luke the ninth chapter, verse number 44. just want to share with you that Jesus oftentimes repeated and shared in different contexts about the value and the necessity for becoming a good listener. Luke 9 and 44. Are you there with me? Let's read together. Listen to me and remember what I say. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. Notice we said, listen to me and remember what I say. Now, Jesus is talking to his, his followers, his disciples, but he constantly, Cassandra tells them, listen to me. Now, guys, as your pastor, I, I, y'all hear me constantly exhorting you to listen to the Word of God. Listen to me as I give you the Word of God. Now, listen, I, I, I'm not so naive enough to believe that everybody is truly listening to me, even this morning, because we get all kinds of distraction. We have all kinds of stuff going on in our world, and if we're not careful, the stuff that's going on in our world, the things that are distracting us will keep us from listening attentively to what the Word of God is saying to us every Sunday and every Wednesday. Can I get a witness? So we got to realize that listening is Important. It is important. So, so uh, I, I want to give you some things right quick, and 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 because if we're going to become better listeners, I want to give you some some tangible things that we got to begin to incorporate into our uh, interaction and relationship with people. This, this this works in church, but it also works at work. It also works in the home. It also works in your relationship with. Whoever you in relationship with, your parents, your kids, your spouse, whoever, it works in the home also. So we got to remember that listening is important. Now, now watch, watch this, watch this. Uh, first thing I want you to just jot, kind of jot down some care consideration that we got to make sure that we are we're, we're on point. So let me, let me go back to what I said earlier. I said that listening is foundational to caring, Right? Watch this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, look it up on the screen. Listening is foundational to caring, and it takes a concerted effort to be a good listener. If you have never thought about being a good listener, if you have never worked on being a good listener, if you have not observed your listening skills, you're probably not as good a listener as you need to be. I'm going to say it right now. Because some, some of us think that we hear everything and we know everything. Jesus constantly said, listen to me. All right? We got to get to the point to where we realize that listening is foundational to caring and it takes a concerted effort to be a good listener. I, I, I like, how many of y'all have heard of Stephen Covey before? Stephen Covey, uh, he made a statement. He says, he says, most people don't listen with the intent to understand. They listen with an intent to reply. Let me repeat that. Stephen Covey said, most people do not listen with the intent to understand, but they listen with an intent to reply. In other words, they sitting there listening, and, and, they're, and they're not trying to understand what you say. They're trying to get their comeback together to refute what you just said, rather than listening to understand what you just said. Can I get a witness? 
And so, so most people <laughs> don't listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the, an intent to reply. And I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Now, now it, it, it tends to be quite apparent, guys, when we are actively listening and genuinely interested in people and what's on their hearts and what's on their minds. Because, again, if, we, if we're going to show that we care, Veronica, that means that somebody comes to us with something heavy-hearted, dealing with something, we need to make sure that we are listening with the intent to understand like Jesus repeatedly said in the Scripture, okay? So, so, so Pastor, what are some things that can help us to get to that point to where we, 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 we sit and we listen attentively and we show people that we care? Well, the first thing is this. Number one, we got to realize, consider the following thing. Listening requires obedience. Everybody say listening. Y'all didn't say it loud enough. Everybody say listening requires obedience. Throughout Scripture, Jesus speaks in parables, and he uses uh, hyperbolic type language, amen? And to decipher what Jesus is communicating, it is of the utmost importance to listen not just to the words, but also to the message and the heart behind it. Let me say it again. In Scripture, Jesus oftentimes used parables and hyperbolic language to get a message out. You Listen, just taking a parable and not listening beyond just the words don't get you confused. Are y'all listening to me today? See, if everything were literal, literal in the parables, then, then we'd, have, we, we'd be cutting off ears. Come on. Uh, we'd be plucking our eyeball out, right? If, you know, if, 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 if your right hand offend you, he said, well, cut it off. How many of y'all cutting your hand off? No, because as he, there was a message to the parable that if you don't listen attentively enough, you'll miss it. Are y'all listening to me today? So, so listening requires obedience. Now, Jesus is... It's about relationship over rules. Y'all do know that, right? He's about relationship over rules. Say, Jesus is about relationship over rules. In other words, relationship is more important than Jesus than rules. Because Jesus knows if you get in relationship with him, some of the rules out there, you won't be breaking. Can I get a witness? Remember when he was asked that question? What's the most important commandment? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him, and him only shall I serve with all thy heart, mind, and soul. All right? First commandment, right? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. And the second commandment is like unto it. Thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus said all of the laws, all of the prophetic messages hinge on that command. Those two commands which are relational, my vertical relationship with God and my horizontal relationship with people. My vertical relationship with God and my horizontal relationship with people. Notice he did not go out down and list all the things, the, the don'ts, everything you can't do. He says, if you understand relationship, there's some of that stuff you will not do. Amen. If you, really, if you really love me and you're in relationship with me, you, you wouldn't come and shoot me and watch me die. Very simple example, but that's, that's true, right? If you really love me, if we have a proper relationship. So, so, so when we look at this thing, Jesus is about relationship over rule. The same is true when we connect with and listen to people. It's about relationship over rules. Now watch, go to Matthew 5th chapter, verse number 17. Matthew 5 and 17 right quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Matthew 5 and 17. Listening skills. If we're going to show that we really care, we got to learn to be good listeners. Hallelujah. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse number 17. Glory to God. Matthew 5 and 17. Look at what the text says. Let me get there. Are you still with me today? Watch this. Watch this now, okay? First chapter says what? Don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses 
or the writings of the prophets. No, he said, I came to accomplish their purpose. I came to fulfill them. That's what Jesus said. Go to Matthew 7, chapter, verse number 12. Matthew 7, verse number 12. He said, I didn't come to abolish it, but I came to fulfill them. And that fulfillment comes through him carrying out his relational responsibility as given to him by his Father in heaven. Glory to God. So listening requires obedience, obedience. In other words, if, 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 if Jesus gives a parable and there's a deeper meaning, then I can't just read it on the surface without, amen, uh, getting to the point where I'm, I'm sitting still and I'm, I'm, I'm showing spiritual discipline and obedience enough to where I can allow the Holy Spirit to give me insight behind that parable that Jesus gave. Look at this, Matthew the 7, chapter, verse number 12. Let's read out loud and on purpose. It says what? Do to others whatever you will like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. Now watch this, guys. If you you don't you don't have to you don't have to be deep theologically to understand what this is saying. Do unto others whatever you will like them to do unto you. Why is that difficult? It's difficult because we hadn't realized that in order to do unto others like we want them to do unto us, we got to first of all be in relation with the God above. You can't love people as yourself if you don't have a passionate relationship with God. It's not going to happen because we are, as human beings, inherently selfish. So if I'm not passionate in pursuing my relationship with God, then I won't be able to do this. But this is a commandment, right? Was, was this a suggestion that Jesus gave? Watch, look at what it said. Do to others if you want to, if you feel like it, if they're your cousin, if you like them. No. This is a direct command. And the command says, do unto others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. So, so we see here, Jesus has given us a, a, a mandate uh, uh, and a command here that we got to do, but we can't do it if we don't have a relationship with God first. Obedience demonstrates discipline, value, and devotion, and it invests in relationships that matter the most. Amen? So, 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 so when, we, when, we, when, we are, when we are walking in obedience, we will invest in relationships rather than just religion. Can I get a witness? So, so, so listening requires us to be obedient because if you're not obedient, there's going to be certain things you're not going to do. You're not even sitting listening to anybody. You'll get tired and want to hang the phone up. Y'all have felt that way before? Anybody? Hold on. We're going to get to you, all of y'all, just say, all of us in just a second. All of us, okay? So, so number two, Listening requires patience, number one, or obedience, number one. Number two, listening requires patience. Everybody say patience. You got to be patient to listen to people. All right? It requires patience. Watch this. Good listeners typically, here's what they do. They'll, they'll, good listeners will, will, will paraphrase what people say. What I think I heard you say was this, that, and other. Well, well, I think you said you felt like you you felt like I was ignoring you uh, the other day when when my when my eyes moved over here or when I whenever I I, I picked up the remote control and turned the TV channel while you were talking to me. All right, is that what you just told me? All right, so I'm paraphrasing what that person said to get an understanding about and help them to know that I am listening. I did catch what you said. Have any of y'all ever heard, had your spouse uh, come to you uh, and say, "What did I just say?" Come on, Andre, is that, come on, Vic, is that, Craig, is that, what did I just say? Uh, and most men, come on, I'm, I'm one of them, okay? Most men will tell you the last three words of the sentence that you just said, <laughs> but they missed all the other three sentences before because maybe we will not listen attentively, right? I, I know Marrera has caught me that way before. What did I just say? What, and, and my mind goes into overdrive. I'm trying to regurgitate what she said. Because I was not listening. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am, I, am I the only one that's ever been there? 
Can I get another brother to agree with me? And some of your sisters also. All right? I, but if you can't repeat back what that person said or paraphrase it, you may not be the exact words. If you can't paraphrase it, you probably were not listening as well as you thought you were. Can I get a witness? If you come with something that's totally different, we know you weren't listening. Are y'all are, are still tracking with me? Now, now, now watch this, guys. I, I, I want y'all to, to, to hear me carefully. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me put a pen right here because good listeners paraphrase what people say. Let me, let me go on and give them to you, okay? Good listeners make comments that affirm they are hearing what others are saying. In other words, if we're talking about um, the child and some behavior problems at school, and then you come comment and say, well, you know what? Uh, uh, he told me they got a ball game on Friday. You want to go to the ball game? Wait a minute. Now, we were talking about the child's behavior at school. You commented on something that was totally different than what we were talking about. Good listeners make comments that affirm that they are hearing what others are saying. They'll, they'll, they'll throw in some comments that let you know that, hey, I am dialed into what you're saying. Other thing, number three, good listeners limit distractions. Good listeners limit distractions. Everybody say limit distractions. They don't, they, they listen, here's, here's, here's one of the worst things in the world that we do. While somebody is talking to us, uh-huh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we act like we're so important. Look at me. Let me tell you all this. None of, nobody in here is so important that you got to take every phone call that comes. If you're in the middle of a conversation with someone, let that conversation rise to the level of importance that you, that you let somebody leave you a voicemail. That, that they do have voicemail on these things. Y'all know that, right? So if I'm talking to you, and the whole time I'm talking to you, you constantly look at your phone. Okay, maybe you put your phone down, but then it, then it buzzes and you're over there looking at it. Nobody hears that important. Unless you're expecting a... A, a, a call that's, 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 a, that's an emergency situation, put that phone up. See, ain't nobody saying nothing now because 95% of y'all are guilty. Good listeners don't look at their phone. They limit distractions. Amen? Let the church say amen. Let's say it again. I've seen some of y'all in the restaurants. Suppose we're holding a conversation. But we're looking at your phone. Good listeners limit distractions. Next thing, good, good listeners make eye contact. You make eye contact with people when you talk. Because I, you know, do, do you not believe that as, as, as Mary sat at the master's feet, Brother Dwayne, I bet you she would dial into him, looking right in front of his face. See, good listeners make eye contact. All right, if, if you if you if you if you up there we're talking. And you watching people go by and look at here, look at that. That's, that's not what a good listener does, okay? Next, next thing. Good listeners are sensitive to other people's body language. You, 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 you observe it. You see when it looks like they're getting tired. You, you, you see when maybe, you know, maybe, maybe they, they, they're frustrated. They observe body language. They, they're sensitive to other people's body language. And that'll give you a clue as to what's going on with them. All right? So, 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 so. These are things that you got to take into consideration. Now, watch this, this last one on here, and I, I want to give you some things that, to make sure that you understand some, some stuff that, that you may not be as good a listener as you think you are, okay? So we're, we're going to look at those in just a second. Good listeners make a connection between the comments of others and the encouragement they offer. Good listeners make a connection between the comments of others and the encouragement that they offer. If I'm encouraging you in an area that's totally unrelated to what you're talking about, I miss the mark. You tell me about you got problem with your husband or your marriage is messed up and, 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 you, and you're, you're, you're the a dire straight. And I said, well, you know what? You know, y'all doing good though financially, aren't you? What? We're talking about a hurt, a pain, a valley experience and I go and talk about something that's totally unrelated to what we've been sharing about, that is, that's not a good listen, okay? Watch this, guys. Here's how you know you're a, a, a bad listener, okay? 
Now, just, just, just make a mental note. I'm, I don't even have this up on, on the screen, but, but you're not a good listener if, if you oftentimes finish the thoughts and sentences verbally on your mind what somebody else is getting ready to say. You ever around those people? They're going to finish your thoughts. And half the time they're wrong because they weren't listening to you. And the same thing happens with preaching. You know, if I'm preaching, don't try to finish my thoughts. And I know sometimes in, 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 in our modern vernacular, people are used to certain phraseologies and they'll, they'll finish it. He may not come when you want him, but he's what? No, I, I wouldn't get ready to say that though. <laughs> see, see, you, you sitting there, y'all just proved my point, didn't you? He may not come when you want him, but you know what? He's still good. <laughs> so you missed the whole thing. But now watch, watch, see, 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 bad listeners finish other folks' thoughts and sentences, either verbally or in your mind you know what they're getting ready to say. Either one is bad, right? Listeners learn how to receive. Here's another, here's another bad trait. Uh, bad listeners often are thinking about what they're going to say next rather than truly grasping what you're saying. So if you find yourself in a conversation with somebody, but you sit up there thinking about what you're going to say next, you're not a good listener. That's something you got to work on. Amen? Here's another thing. Bad listeners oftentimes find themselves getting, getting impatient and restless, especially when you have a talker, right? You're sitting there getting restless, and you, you're impatient. You start... It's almost 12 o'clock. Come on. Impatient and restless. Here's another thing. When you easily get frustrated, <coughs> you easily get frustrated when a conversation turns into what we call a monologue. In other words, you can't get a word in edgewise. That person is talking, and you get mad because they keep on talking. See, good listeners realize that sometimes people got a lot to say, and you want to give them an opportunity and an advent to say what they got to say, all right? Uh, now, so, so, so here's his last point I want to give you uh, about bad listeners. Bad listeners find it hard. And here's where I think a lot of us get caught up. A lot of us get trapped. Bad listeners find it hard not to interrupt. Bad listeners find it hard not to interrupt people and to interject their own opinion about whatever's being said. If you don't learn how to let people finish what they're saying before you start talking, you'll never become a good listener. And listening is foundational to caring. So people that think you're not listening to them, they're going to think you don't even care about them. Are y'all still tracking with me today? So go with it right quick. To e Let's put some word on this thing. Everybody say put some word on it, Pastor. Go with me to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Ephesians chapter number four. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to look at verse number one and two. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse number one and two. So if listening is foundational to caring, and if I'm going to show and exhibit that I do really care, then wouldn't you surmise along with me that it's important for me to learn how to be a good listener? I gave a handout to our married couples a, a, a few months back, maybe even last year, where it talks about empathetic listening. Empathetic listening takes skill. It takes training. It takes, it takes uh, a coordinated effort, an intentional, purposeful effort to be an empathetic listener. And, and, and I'll, I'll, you know what, I'll get Beverly to shoot those out because all of us need to understand how to become empathetic listeners. We'll, we'll, we'll sit in that. I'm going to send it out to you via email, okay? So check your email. If you don't have email, come out of the office and pick one up, amen? But we know, need to learn how to be empathetic. Listen, watch what the text says here. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, it says, it says what? Uh, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been what? Called by whom? God. Now look at verse 2. Watch this now. It says what? Always 
be humble and what? Gentle. Who is writing? Who's he writing to? The church at Ephesus. And he says, always be what? Humble and gentle. How many of y'all are rough sometimes? Yeah, you just, just talk rough. Don't care what you say. You got to watch yourself. Because the text says here, always, not just when you're not upset, but always be humble and what? And gentle. It says, watch this. Be patient with each other. Look at this. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So what does that mean to make allowance for each other's faults? In other words, when somebody messes up, I don't crucify them. When somebody messes up, I don't act like I ain't ever messed up. Have y'all ever been around those folks? When you mess up, it's the worst thing in the world. But when they mess up, well, you know, child, I didn't really mean, you know, charge them my head, not my heart. Charge them my head, not my heart. Listen, learn how, come on, to be gentle and learn how to make allowances for other folks' fault because you got some too. Amen? Making allowances for each other's faults because of what? Your love. Love, the Bible says, covers a multitude of sins. Now, now go with me to James 1, 19. James 1, 19. Pop it up real quick. We got we to move. So, listening, we say it requires obedience. It requires patience. And we're going to see that listening requires, number three, tolerance. Okay? Watch this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be what? Quick to talk. No, it didn't say quick to talk. Quick to what? Listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Now, I like that. I, I, I quote this scripture time and time again. James says, we must all be quick to listen. Listening is foundational to caring. So quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry, okay? Because, you know, a, a lot of us, uh, you know, including myself sometimes, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I, I'll tell you, I have to work on this too. I have to be conscious of it because it's easy when someone is talking or going on and sharing their feeling. When you think of something that you want to say, you interrupt them. Let me, let me see the hands of y'all who've had that problem before where you interrupt folk, people because you, you got to get your little bit in. Huh? We got to work on that. Touch yourself right here and say, I got to work on that. All right? So, because if I'm going to show you that I care, I got to care enough to listen to everything you got to say before I jump in and tell you what I got to say. And while I'm listening, I shouldn't be sitting there thinking about what I'm going to say to dis refute what you just said. Sometimes people are telling you how they feel. How they feel is how they feel. It may not necessarily be right. It may not have been your intention, but that's how they feel. Listen to how they feel. It don't have to be right, but you got to learn how to listen. All right? So, so number three, write, write the third thing. Now, get back to our, our, our point. So listening requires tolerance. And let me say this. Listening can be, uh, you know, especially tough when people's personality traits and ways of communicating clash with ours. Yeah, it, it can be a little tough. But listening requires tolerance. But it, it can be tough when people's personality traits and their ways of communicate clash with ours. Let me, let me, look, look, a few common personas that we run into. It, watch this. We have people who, uh, what we, we call the know-it-all. Y'all ever talk to a know-it-all? Anybody ever talk to a know-it-all? How many of y'all out there is a know-it-all? Okay, uh, no, 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 we don't have any of those in here, do we? But if their personality trait clashes with yours, it makes it a little more difficult, but we still have an obligation to listen. So we said that that's what we call the know-it-all. Then we have what we call the reserve type that can make it a little bit different. They reserve, they don't, they, they, they don't unpack stuff. They kind of keep it down. They don't say a whole lot. The reserve type. They can make it a little more difficult to listen. And then we have the rambler. Y'all ever talk to the ramblers? They just ramble on and on, on and on, on and on, on and on. On and on. Keep on going. Keep on keeping on. They just ramble from one subject to the next. That makes it a little bit more difficult, right? 
Then you have the woe is me type. Everything is bad. Woe is me. Everything is, you know, the man keep me down. I ain't gonna, we ain't going to do this. We ain't. Stop that. The woe is me type. They make it difficult sometimes. And then the person who goes into excruciating detail. You know, sometimes you need to give the cliff note version of the problem. <laughs> you know, come on now. Sometimes you don't have to tell it all in that setting. Are you, are you listening to me? And it can make it a little bit difficult with that person who just, just, just goes into everything, just tells everything. Some, some stuff you may need to kind of check with your spouse before you tell it at marriage fellowship. Is it okay for me to share this? Okay? Because some people go into a little bit too much detail. Now, I, I, I'm all for transparency, but every excruciating detail may not necessarily be, it, it'll make it a little bit more difficult for a person to listen, okay? So, but it requires tolerance. And so, whenever somebody's in one of those categories, know-it-all, reserve type, they're a rambler, they're, uh, uh, you know, woe is me, or they go into excruciating detail, regardless, we have to learn how to listen and let them know that you're not irritating them, okay? Quit rolling your eyes. Can you step upside the head? Come on, I want the to shut up. No, you have an obligation to listen, okay? All right, number four. Write this one down. Number four. Listening requires silence. Everybody say silence. Listening requires silence. When given the opportunity to listening, to listen, our natural tendency is to instead seize that opportunity to talk, to speak. But listening requires silence, guys. Just kind of jot this from down. People can't listen and talk at the same time. That's basic, but some, some of us don't understand that. People can't listen and talk at the same time. Can't do it. Okay? You cannot do it. You cannot listen and talk at the same time. You know, and, and when you're being preoccupied with your own thoughts, it you know, and what you want to say, it's gonna it's gonna affect your ability to listen to that person who's sharing their heart with you. Okay, all right. So so so, brother pastor, wh what are you getting at? You you told us about Martha and Mary. You, talk, you told us about Jesus, and what he said, and how 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 Mary was doing the necessary thing, while Martha wanted him to uproot her from listening to come and work. Now, working has its place in ministry, but when we're showing that we care f about people and for people, it goes beyond just doing something for them. Biblical caring involves relational commitment. Everybody say relational commitment. So what are, what are our key points? What are our takeaway here? Well, two things I want you to lead with, okay? And I want you to focus on these this coming week, okay? Point number one, Prioritize people over task. Prioritize people over task. Some of us are, are good at doing tasks because it, you know, it doesn't require us to be relational because we, we haven't developed that part of our, 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 our growth development to where we, we, we're comfortable interacting with people. We'll go and work and do something for somebody, but when it comes to talking with them, spending some time with them, listening to them, we're not very good at that. And we got to get better at that. Okay, so prioritize people over tasks. See, focusing on just the task causes us to miss the blessing and the learning that comes from connecting with and listening to people. Sit down, slow down, lean forward and listen. Okay, so prioritize what? People over tasks. Now, the customary caring model in the average church is do something for somebody. If you're sick, bring you some food. Huh? Uh, uh, if you're in the hospital, send some flowers. Go by and visit. Those things are good, especially the visitation. But don't boil caring down to you doing something, paying somebody bill, uh, bringing them something, taking somewhere. It involves spending time to build a relationship. So people prioritize people over tasks. And lastly, Listen with your heart. Everybody say, listen with my heart. Everyone has a desire to feel appreciated and loved. And, and, and people oftentimes will share in ways that are more 
covert than overt. In other words, uh, some people will talk in pair. I've, I've listened to people sometimes before, and by the time they get through talking, I say, well, okay, now, you just spoke in parables. Tell me what you really mean. You, have you ever heard that happen before? You're talking to somebody, and you're like, what are they talking about? What I start doing is saying, okay, you just spoke in parables. All right, now give me what you really mean. And then they, they pull back the layers and say, here's what I'm talking about, Pastor. He did this or she did this or he makes me feel this way. She makes me feel that way. Okay, good. Now we can deal with that. But don't talk way up here. And, 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 and when people do that, be discerning enough to say, you ain't really said what you really mean. Hello? Because I've discovered people will Latoya talk around an issue and you'll meet with them three or four times before they really get to the real issue. Let's save some time, baby. Let's get to the real issue up front, and we can put some biblical strategy on that uh, so, that, so that we can help you get to where you need to get to. So listening with your heart will enable you to understand that, hey, what they really said wasn't a real issue. God will give you a spirit of discernment because sometimes people are reluctant to be overt with their problem. They, they, it's, it's like a, you know what a covert operation is? That means it's undercover. You talking to me about it, but it's undercover. You ain't really telling me what the real deal is. Hello? What's the real deal? My husband cheated on me. What's the real deal? My wife stepped out on me. What's the real deal? Um, my, you know, my, my children are going astray. Tell me what it is so we can deal with it. And while I'm listening, I got to listen with my heart so I can understand, are you really telling me what the real deal is? So, guys, Mar Mary did the necessary thing. I want to tell you, Listening is foundational to caring. Jesus gave his life so that you and I could experience, amen, a proper relationship with him. The more that relationship is developed, the more our relationship with people can be developed. Everybody say listening is important. Every head bow, every eye closed. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this grand opportunity today. We thank you, Lord, for sharing with us, God. Thank you for giving us a chance to